Hi guys, thank you so much for being here with me on this video. My name is Angela and thank you for coming and spending a little time out with me today. So guys, in this video we are going to be talking about five things that I wish I knew when I started on my weight loss journey. I've been on my journey for four and a half years now and in total I've lost 97 pounds. Now I still have about 43 pounds to go. I would like in total to lose 140 pounds in total. So I've still got a little way to go but I'm well past halfway. And on my journey there has been lots and lots of ups and downs and I'm sure if you've been on your own weight loss journey, you might have even experienced some of these uh, ups and downs and these frustrations as well. And I wish I had known about these right at the start and it would have prevented me from being so demotivated, from getting frustrated and even wanting to give up. So guys, we're going to dive straight in and explore these five areas. And the first thing that I wish I'd known when I had started my weight loss journey back in January 2019 was that weight loss is not linear. Weight loss doesn't come in a straight line because weight loss will fluctuate it will go up it will go down and that can be really really frustrating and sometimes there is absolutely no reason why the weight loss fluctuates it's a mystery but i know that for me personally some things that can impact those fluctuations is the weather so I suffer with uh, an autoimmune disease condition and I get a lot of inflammation. So when it's uh, really damp and wet, my joints swell up really badly and that can show on the scales and uh, I can gain a good couple of pounds then. But also when the weather is hot as well, um, bodies can or my body can retain more fluid as well and that will show on the scale but also if I've been doing a lot of activity outside of my normal activity as well my muscles and my joints can become inflamed too so I can see fluctuations there so there's lots of reasons why plus things that such as hormones uh, they can play a huge part in our bodies fluctuating. And I had, didn't know that right at the start of my journey. And it caused me a lot of frustration, a lot. Um, and the, to the point that there were times that I just felt that the plan that I was following, the Weight Watchers plan, wasn't working for me. Because when I put in a huge amount of effort in a particular week, what I wanted to see was my effort being reflected on the scale with weight loss. And I realised after some time was that the weeks, if I have a good seven days, for example, the previous seven days was really good. I was following the plan, I was tracking, I was staying within my points, I was moving more, drinking my water, getting all my sleeping, doing all of that good stuff. I, because I've done all of that hard work, I'm expecting to see a weight loss on the scales and a good one at that. I might be thinking a pound, pound and a half or two pounds or more. But what I realised is, guys, doesn't always work like that and what I came to realize is sometimes our bodies can take time to catch up with our hard work and sometimes it could be two weeks or three weeks after that we see the results on the scale and what my coach and my mentor said to me was that as long as you keep treating your body right and you're 
nourishing your body, you're moving, you're drinking your water, you're getting all that stuff and you're really taking care of yourself, then the scales will catch up. And that has proved to be so right for me. But what I had to learn was the scales will fluctuate. And when I, and you know, if you've seen my story, and I will leave it in the comment section below. If you've seen my story, you'll know that I don't weigh regularly. Um, maybe every six weeks, eight weeks or so, I will jump on the scale. But at the time when I was weighing regularly, I'd get so disappointed because I put in all of that work, all of that effort, and I wasn't seeing it reflected on the scale. In fact, there were some ways I'd put all that effort in and I might have even gained. And that was really, really disheartening and disappointing. And I just went through that whole cycle of all the plan isn't working, it's not working for me, until I realised that one, our bodies will fluctuate for no particular reason. There might be some reasons that you know of, but, you know, for no reason, it might just fluctuate. But also, weight loss isn't linear. The weight will come off when our bodies are ready for it to come off. Um, but as long as we're just nourishing and treating our bodies well, that result will show. But, yeah, frustrating. Really frustrating. Um, so what I started doing on my journey was thinking, well, if the scale isn't going to be reliable for the weeks that I want to see that result, then I have to find a different way of measuring my success. So I started looking at other areas, all those non-scale victories I started looking at. I started looking at my clothes um, and at, at the first, at the start, just feeling more comfortable in my clothes and that showed me actually there was progress there it might not have shown on the scales but I had made progress because you know my jeans got up a little bit easier I didn't have to like suck my belly in just to button them up or you know my top was like you know a bit looser on me all of those signs was things were signs that I was making progress even though the scales wasn't showing it um also, I would be able to move a little bit easier. I really suffer with my joints. And to be able to move um, without a lot of pain, again, progress for me. To be able to get up and down the stairs or to get out of a chair or even to just to raise my arm above my hand. All of those things were progress, showing me that I've done really, really well, even though the scales might not have reflected it. To be able to get on the floor and play with my grandchildren and then to be able to get up again without my grandson having to put his arm out so that I can, he can help me up. Massive progress for me. But also when I started looking at my body and started looking at my face and looking at my neck and my arms and even like my hat, wrist and being able to get my fingers right the way around my wrist, you know, to me that was real progress. That my rings would, I haven't got any rings on today, but when I wore my rings or my bracelets, you know, it would be a bit looser or to put an extra tie, the extra knot into my, my belt. All of those things were great signs that I was making progress. But those things can take time, can take weeks, if not months, to see that. Um, but even on an everyday basis, just feeling more energised. Having more energy, again, was a great sign that I was making progress. So over time, I came to learn when I started my journey, I was looking for that downward progress, um, but realised that doesn't, for a lot of people, it doesn't happen. So what, and certainly on my journey, what I've seen is one week I might lose a pound, Next week, I might have stayed the same. The week after, I might have lost a pound and a half. Then I might gain a pound, but then I might lose three pounds next week and then stay the same and go up a pound and then down again, two pounds. And what I came to realise is that is normal. And having spoken to lots of other people on their weight loss journey, realised actually that is very normal. 
it is really normal to get that up and down that wavy line um, on our journey but when you look at that if you track your your weight in your weight loss in a chart for example it's very rare that you will see going down like that like a ski slope very rare but what you will see is it goes you get those ups and downs but eventually it starts going downwards yeah so it starts up here and then that those goes like those those are the uh, gains these are the losses even some stay the same but over time it'll go like that and even though i've lost um 97 pounds in four and a half years what that actually works out to be is just over a pound a week yeah just over a pound a week and there were listen there were many 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 weeks i was so frustrated with their scales because i was putting the work in and I was either staying the same, sometimes I would gain, I was like a yo-yo, going up and down, up and down, and it, I get it, it's really, really, really frustrating, and that's why for me, and me alone, personally, I decided to put those scales away, and just focus in on the work, and follow the plan, live a healthy lifestyle, and when I started doing that, and switching my focus, then I saw the and when i did weigh myself i saw that big weight loss over six seven eight weeks or more but what i didn't see was that fluctuation the up and down and that worked for me because that fluctuation would really knock me off course and not seeing that but just seeing that i got on the scales and the first time i did that it was eight weeks that I no sorry six weeks that I hadn't weighed six weeks or eight weeks something like that and I've lost 16 pounds in total um but within that there would have been a lot of that fluctuation um so yeah you know um weight loss isn't linear and it's disappointing it's frustrating and it doesn't seem fair but it's not linear but what I learned is that I had to just keep going, keep going, looking after me, looking after my body and really embracing the healthy lifestyle. And when I did that, the results will come. Let me know, guys, pop it in the chat box if you're the same, if you get really frustrated with those fluctuations on the scale. Do let me know, I'd love to know. So the second thing I wish I knew when I started my weight loss journey is that there are going to be days where I feel really motivated and really inspired, but there's days that I'm just not going to feel it. And when I started my journey, I was I was running out of those gates. I was so excited. I was, you know, really going at it hell for leather i was really going at it and then after my first weigh-in when i started my journey four and a half years ago i was so disappointed because i actually gained weight i gained weight on my first week and i was just absolutely disappointed and um i couldn't believe it but then when i spoke to my coach I realized what the problem was and I realized that although on the Weight Watchers plan fruit was zero and bananas were zero I was just like eating bananas like nobody's business I, I could have competed with a monkey and won the amount of bananas I was eating and I realized that even though on the Weight Watchers plan there were lots of zero pointed foods they still have calories and eating them in moderation is really, really important. So my motivation at the start was really high, but then it came down to earth with a great big crash. And that has been the course of my entire journey for four and a half years on 
on my wellness and weight loss journey with Weight Watchers. I've had those highs and I've had those very, very deep lows and I've had those lows to the point where I was just like, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done with Weight Watchers, I'm done with this journey for various, various reasons. But what I realised, and whenever I got to that point, I realised that this isn't about Weight Watchers. It wasn't about the plan. It wasn't about the blue plan or the green plan or whatever plan or personal points or smart points. It wasn't about that. It was about me and it was about my health. So every time I said... And this took me a long time to realise this, guys. It didn't come overnight. Every time I said, that's it, I'm done. I'm done with Weight Watchers. I'm done with the plan. I'm giving up. What I was really saying was, I'm giving up on me. I'm giving up on me. I'm giving up on my health and my wellness and my happiness. And my ability to achieve all the things that I want to achieve in my life. So I had to find, and when I realised that, it was so powerful for me. Because Weight Watchers keeps changing its plan. It has to, to keep up with the science. But then I wasn't changing. I was ready to throw my toys out the pram. But then when I realised, actually, no, this is much bigger than Weight Watchers or the plan or whatever plan, it's about me. I had to find an arsenal of, of resources to keep me motivated because those dips will come and the highs will come and they did come but I had a moment where again I had a light bulb moment and I realised that and it was from a quote and the quote said, motivation gets you started. And I thought, you know what, that's right. Because I would go to a Weight Watchers workshop or I'd listen to a podcast or, you know, I'd talk to somebody and my motivation went up. So the motivation got me started, but then I'd come crashing back down. And sometimes it was a great big crash and other times it was that slippery slope sliding down. And I realised that then I needed to get something to get me motivated again and then I'd go back to my workshop, my Weight Watchers workshop and then I was re-motivated. But then the next day that motivation started to come down. And then I would go on Instagram or Facebook and I would see something and then I'd get motivated again. And then I'd come back down. And it was just constantly like that. Constantly like that. And when I was motivated, I was on it. I was eating healthy. I was living that light, healthy lifestyle. But as soon as that motivation started to dip, then all of those unplanned foods came in. And I was like, oh, I don't feel like going for a walk today. Oh, I don't feel like cooking. Oh, I don't feel like, you know. And then all those... You know, I was back to those bad habits. So what I my I had the realization that actually motivation only gets you going. Motivation is only going to get you so far, and it, it it's kind of like um. Do you know when you um when you um. And it's kind of like, you know, when you're on that skateboard and you put one foot on the skateboard and the other foot is sort of going like that, gathering speed, and then you push off and you push off and you go really fast and then it starts to slow. It starts to slow down and then before you know it, you're coming to a stop. Or it could be like when you're on the swing or you're pushing your kids on the swing and you, you pull them back 
and then you let go and then they go off and then they come back and every time they come back and forth it goes slower and slower and slower until it comes to a stop and then there's a point where the kids are like no I want more I want more so you've got to find a way to keep that swing going so you push them off and then they come back and you they go again and as you start to see it slowing down what do you do you get behind it and you give it another big push and they go higher and higher and it, it's like that excuse the visuals <laughs> but motivation is very much like that and I realized that just as you know a parent or a grandparent would be there ready to push that child when they were slowing down i had to have something behind me to keep pushing me to keep going to keep that momentum going yeah to keep going and keeping that motivation high because once the motivation started to slow down Unless I've got that push, it's hard to get it going again. So I realised that motivation gets you going. But what's going to get me to the end of my journey? And I realised it's commitment. I've realised that I have to be committed. And it's kind of like, guys, you know if you've been in a rel oops, you you know if you've been in a relationship with somebody and at first it's love at first sight and you know you wooed by them, they woo you, you get all of those butterflies, and it's just absolutely wonderful the first couple of weeks, maybe in the first couple of months. But by the end of the first year, it's like, I feel a bit deflated. But what stops you from ditching that person and moving on to someone else? And I realise it's commitment. Committed to this person. I've made that commitment to them that I'm going to be with them, that I'm going to love them, I'm going to care for them, I'm going to be there through the good times and the bad times. And I realised that's the same with me and my journey. At the start of my journey, it was all those butterflies. It's a new plan, new way of eating, excited by all these recipes and the new community. That's the butterflies. That's the lust. That's the, you know, the romance. But as that starts to wane, as that starts to wear off, as the gold comes off, and you realise you've got brass underneath. The only thing that's going to keep us going is commitment. Being committed. And that's why when people are committed, they stay in a relationship for 10, 15, 20 years, 40 years, 60 years, 80 years. They may no longer have those butterflies. They might not even have romance. But they're committed. They're committed to each other. And I realised that. I realised with my journey, I have to be committed to me, not to Weight Watchers, not to Slimming World, not to Calorie Counting, not to Keto or High Fat, High Sugar, Low This, Low That, not to the gym, nothing. No, I have to be committed to me, to Angela. And when I realised that, it changed everything for me. So on those days where that motivation dips, and it will, and it, it still does every day, you know, or not every day, but often it will dip for me. What keeps me going and prevents me from giving up is being committed. Putting those healthy habits in place and being committed to me and my journey. Because it's hard on our own. It's hard and that's why 
when we realise that we're committed to something, we find that community. And I had to find that community that was going to work for me. Somewhere where I could show up and be authentic. I could be myself. I could be me, Angela, with, you know, my faults and my flaws and my imperfections. And to be comfortable to say, do you know what? Yeah, I, I over ate last night or I had, a, you know two bags of crisps too many and I, I needed to find that community and when we tap into those communities and we feel find like-minded people for me it just made the journey so much easier and that commitment will last it's kind of like you know again going back to a relationship you know, it's not just you and your partner in that relationship. You've got, well, it is, but you've got your circle of friends. You've got your families, you know, that you could talk to your friends, that you can talk to your colleagues at work. So even when things are not going that hot in the relationship, you can turn to your friend and you could talk to them for support. And it is exactly like that on the, my wellness journey. I found a couple of communities that I could reach out to and say, do you know what, I'm really struggling this week. And get that support and then that just helps me back on the journey. And that helps me then to get, can make that connection with my journey and continue being committed um so i wish i'd realized that earlier and there's a couple of things in there that i'll summarize is that um on the wellness journey i'm not always going to feel motivated we might not feel motivated every single day and that's normal but we need to be committed because motivation and commitment completely separate things we need to be committed and we will commit to our health and wellness and weight loss journey even when we don't feel that motivated yeah because we're still committed to you know you're still committed to your partner even if those butterflies of that and the romance is gone you're still committed so you know that's that's the difference um and also i I wish I'd known that the journey would be tough. It would be long. There would be its ups and downs, but having those communities, that key community and those other communities um, with great coaching and, you know, member support, uh, tools that I could lean on, podcasts that I can listen to, um, recipes that I can turn to, all of that really does make a difference. The third thing that I wish I'd have known when I was on the journey was that weight loss happens when we nourish our bodies. I say that, that's what I realised for me. And everybody's different, but for me, I realised that as soon as I was nourishing my body with nutritious food, weight loss started to happen i started getting less bloated i started to get less lethargic because i was now putting good stuff because guys not all food is equal trust me not all food is equal and there are so many great podcasts out there around food and nutrition that is worth a listen to and i spend a lot of time listening to podcast around food and nutrition to educate myself around what I should be eating and how to nourish my body for weight loss so when I realized that nutrition is essential for weight loss it helped me to start reducing all the crap I hope that's that's okay to say on YouTube but um it helped me to eliminate the rubbish and this you know and on the weight watchers plan i love the weight watchers plan by the way and i've lost 97 pounds on that plan but what i've realized is it's easy to say i'm gonna go for low pointed foods um what's the best low pointed snack i can have what's the best low pointed alternative i can have what's the best low point meals i can have and what i've realized is for me, low points 
isn't always healthy. It isn't always good for me. So I have made a conscious decision to put to nourish my body with good nutrition. So I don't tend to go for a lot of things that have got low fat, low sugar, low carbs. No, I don't tend to go for that because I often think if something has got low fat in, what is it? What's been replaced? So they take out the fat, the manufacturers take out the fat and they often replace it with chemicals, for want of a better word, with chemicals to make it taste good and to get us hooked and addicted. And those chemicals are not good for the body. And I'm not a nutritionist, I'm not a dietitian, um, but I am very interested in food and food science. Um, so, I, you know... For me, I look for whole foods, whole foods that isn't ultra processed. So I tend to reduce, and it is a work in progress for me, I'm working to reduce the amount of ultra processed foods that I have, such as um, biscuits and sweets and crisps. And the crisps will be hard for me because, you know, I do love good crisp. But, um, yeah, I'm really working hard to have less ultra-processed foods and going for more uh, filling and nutritious food, the foods that I cook from source. So, um, you know, things that I make, even if it's biscuits, like I made biscuits yesterday for, with my grandson, making those biscuits... And yes, it does have some preservatives and some ingredients in, but not as much as those in the shops that have been ultra processed and then they're stored for months, if not years in, in warehouses and they're packed full of those um, ingredients so that it can be preserved for such a long time. So, you know, looking at nutrition and nutritious foods, so... That brings me nicely to the snack of the day. You'll notice, guys, I've not done it at the top because I'm trialing it, trialing it, moving it uh, somewhere in the middle of the video because I realised that when you guys come on, you want to get straight into the topic. So that's why I've moved it. So it brings me nicely to my snack of the day. And I've got here just a small handful of walnuts. And walnuts are great foods for brain health um, and good source of minerals and nutrients too. And I've also got here some grapes. And they look like this because they're frozen. I've not long got them out of the freezer. So when I buy my grapes, I give them a really good wash, get all of those chemicals off them. And then I bag them up and pop them in the freezer. And then when I want them, I just take them out and let them thaw. So that's my sack of the day. And then I've got a tea. And this tea is my super fruit. Oh, that's not the super fruits. Let's get the right one. It's this one, the super fruits. God, it smells so nice. And this was from Lidl, my shopping haul in Lidl. So, um, yeah, so that's my third point, guys, is to nourish my body with good nutrition. And I've, within that, I've had to learn to read the packets. I've had to stop, pick the packets up, and read them and if they've got loads of ingredients in it's going back on the shelf um if it's got lots of uh, ingredients that i can't pronounce or don't know what it is it's going back on the shelf so i try and go for ingredients that is with five or less ingredients but ingredients that i recognize too and um and within that, as much whole food, fruits, vegetables um, and lean meats that I can to really nourish my body. The other thing I wish I knew when I started my weight loss journey is, and this will apply to you if you are following the Weight Watchers plan, is that um, Weight Watchers give you your weekly points and your daily points because that is what our bodies need for healthy and safe weight loss. And WW 
as well as the world at large, the medical profession, they all class healthy and safe weight loss as anything from half a pound to two pounds a week. And there might be times where we lose more than that. Say like if we are um, just starting our journey or if we've got a lot of carrying a lot of water, we might lose more than that. But a healthy and safe weight loss after that period is between half and two pounds a week. And what I wish I'd have learned earlier on my journey is that it's absolutely fine to eat all my weeklies and my dailies if I need them. If I don't need them, then that's fine. But most days I eat all my dailies and some weeks, at the start of my journey, I did eat all my dailies and all my weeklies. And I'd lost, I lost four stone doing that right at the start. And then COVID came and then some of those bad habits crept back in and I put, regained some weight. Um, but for, for the bulk of my journey, eating all of my dailies happens most days, if not every day. And every day I tend to dip into my weeklies and by the end of the week I pretty much have had all of my weeklies, yeah, at least at least half if not all of my weeklies and in total on my journey, as I said earlier, I've lost £97. Now I realise that everybody's different and that might not work for you guys. You know, some people find that they lose weight when they are eating just their dailies and some find that if they dip into their weeklies, that's they can still lose. But some people find that if they eat all their weeklies, they don't lose weight. So you've got to find what works for you. But I found that eating all my dailies and my weeklies or most of my weeklies work for me but within that eating nutritious food so for example my walnuts and this small handful of walnuts is like four points but i would much rather eat four points worth of walnuts than i don't know a, a, a chocolate bar or um you know i'm just trying to think of those bars that you can get in b&m and home bargains you know that are like three or four points and they taste delicious but when i look at the ingredients i don't recognize anything so i'm like that's not good for me and i'm not casting any judgments here guys because for some people they love those and they they it works work great for them and it's great convenience food and everything and that's great so you have to find what works for you but for me um i would rather eat a bag of walnuts and get the nutrition out of it than eat you know um a a, a skinny bar or something like that um and likewise with cheese i would rather eat you know half a slab of cheese not that i do but i would rather eat that than having something like synthetic cheese like eat lean or something like that with very little if no nutrition so you know it we choose our poison don't we you know we go for what works for us so go for what works for you guys um but yeah eating all my dailies every single day and most of my weeklies but using all my points on food that's going to nourish my body has helped me lose that 97 pounds to date um yeah so reading those packets and just being a bit more careful about the foods that i choose and using that within my points now what i don't do is um i don't eat my activity points so any points that i gain because of being active of walking or being in the gym or anything like that i don't tend to eat those although you can do um i personally choose not to okay and the fifth area that i wish i knew about when i um started on my 
wellness journey is self-care and self-care is so important um and all aspects of the self-care um not just you know all that uh beautification element not just the skincare and the makeup and the hair and the nails and the bubble bath and all of that but self-care in terms of the mindset as well and listening to podcasts reading and just being really careful what i take in and even within the weight watchers community on connect i still have to be really careful about what voices i hear and listen to because sometimes that can really derail me um but really just finding all of those positive voices which is going to help me you know feel good about myself that's going to keep me feeling committed and keep that commitment going um has really made that difference but even throughout the day just taking five minutes because you know, my life can get really busy with work and family, but sometimes just taking five minutes and doing something for me, even if it's just sitting down with a cup of tea in the garden just for five minutes, or if it's wet and raining, just sitting somewhere where I can look out really makes a difference. Um, and even just sitting, doing nothing, no TV on, no radio no nothing and just listening to the silence just helps to bring everything down so yeah taking a few minutes every day has really made that difference to my self-care and i wish i'd realized just how important that was on my wellness journey because you know i was rushing here and there and being all things to everybody and forgetting about me and to the point where at the start of my journey i didn't even have time to cook properly i didn't have time to shop properly let alone cook properly and that you know really kind of scuppered my journey and as i mentioned i gained weight in my first week and if I'd have just taken that time to focus in on me and my self-care, I would have had time to, back then we had the, the books, I would have had time to read the books and know what I was doing on the plan, but I didn't because I was so busy looking after everybody else. So yeah, I wish I had um, taken more time to focus in on my self-care, on my journey. And the final thing that I wish I had known when I started my journey was how important movement is on the journey. And um, for me, this was this is probably my weakest pillar. So the WW plan has four pillars, which is food, sleep, mindset and activity. And the optimum is to get all four of those pillars in balance. Um, and some, and that's not always easy to do. It can be challenging. But for me, the activity pillar was never has never been my strength, and that's because of my physical limitations. Um, and I suffer with my joints and my health, and um, so I didn't do as much activity as I could have done. But when I started doing activity, even just tiny little movements and moving at home as well, finding YouTube videos that I could move to, even seated, I realised the benefits because I started to feel so much better about myself, just about my achievements, my energy levels went up. Uh, it improved my mindset. It then what made me want to eat healthier meals. It just had that all-round knock-on effect. So I wish I'd have realised just how important activity was. Now, you know, science. The scientists tell us that um, weight loss. Eighty percent of weight loss is what we eat, and twenty percent is about activity. So being active can help to burn off more calories which in turn can lead to weight loss but also what it can do is it can help to 
help to help us to change our shape it helps with our mindset it's good for our joints and our strength and our heart um it's good for all around wellness and doing even doing five minutes a day can really make the difference it's some something to build on and uh yeah i wish i'd have known that sooner I wish I'd have realised that even the smallest of movements, even just, you know, doing five minutes walk or getting out more in the garden or, you know, just stepping on the spot or, you know, just even dancing in the kitchen for five minutes, even that little bit could have made a bigger difference to me. But you know what, guys? We live and we learn and it's not about beating ourselves up it's about okay now that i'm armed with this knowledge what can i do about it so now i incorporate movement every single day on my journey and as a result my mindset is in such a positive place um i feel so much better for it but also the side effects of that is my shape has really changed it's really changed and clothes that I just couldn't get into they're now literally sliding on yes because of the weight loss but also because my body composition that my body shape has also changed too so that's made a huge difference so guys these are my five things that I wish I knew when I started my weight loss journey and just to so guys I hope you found those tips of value those are what worked for me I'd love to know what works for you what things do you wish you had known when you started your weight loss journey? Feel free to pop it in the comments box below. So guys, if you found this video of value, if you found those tips um, and, you know, my, my journey of any help to you, then feel free to give this video a thumbs up. Give it a like. That way the YouTube algorithm will show it to other people and... Uh, Together we may just be able to help somebody else on their journey. Also, if my channel is of value to you, I, on my channel I document my weight loss and wellness journey. I do cooking videos, I do shopping hauls as well and gardening too. And there's lots more to come as well. So if it's going to be of value to you, then click that subscribe button. And guys, click the notification bell too. The benefit of clicking that notification bell is that as soon as I upload an, a new video, you'll get a notification. And you could either tune in and watch it straight away or you can watch it at a later date. But, you know, when you click that bell, you're going to get your reminder. So you'll be always be able to, to see the latest video I put out. And also, guys, feel free to leave a comment below and let me know. What do you wish you'd, you'd known on your wellness journey? And also, if this video, you think this video can help somebody, then share. Do share it with them. And I really want to thank those of you. You know who you are. I really want to thank you for sharing my channel with others and sharing my videos and just telling people about my youtube channel and what i do here because i've seen my um subscription subscriber count really shoot up in the last couple of weeks so that is down to you guys and i thank you so much for that so guys that is it for me i'm off to drink my tea and also have my snacks and i will see you on another video Take care, guys. Bye.